Hi everyone, it's Kim here and today I am doing a process video making a 12 by 12 layout using the 49 and Market Countryside collection. Um, I have this photo of my sister-in-law when she had started doing beekeeping and she'd recently taken over the hive that we have in our garden and it swarmed. And this is the first time that she'd had to deal with a swarm. Um, and luckily it had swarmed into one of our roses and so it was at a height that she could easily get to it. And this was some photos of her um, catching the, hive, uh, the swarm and putting it into a new hive. And I um, picked out a selection of yellow and green embellishments from this collection to use with the patterned paper that I have picked. So I chose to go, uh, so there's there are bee themed products in this collection, but there's also products with um, chickens and geese and, and wire and what have you, which is very farm country. So I just focused on, as I said, the yellow and green colours and the bees that are in the collection to make this layout. So I get people asking me how long it takes me to scrapbook a layout. And so this particular layout only took about 30 minutes, um, which is quick even for me. But I find when a layout falls into place easily um, and everything works well together, which it, it obviously does with the 49 and Market products, then it happens quickly. So uh, what I thought I would do is rather than speed this up, because this is a reasonable length um, layout process. I'm actually going to leave this fully in real time so that you can see exactly what I do. So I haven't cut out any of the faffing. Um, although I picked out products, I hadn't designed this layout so um, before I started. So this is from start to finish and I thought that you may be interested if you don't want to see it at real life pace you can easily speed the video up to watch it um, at faster pace in YouTube and so please feel free to do that um, but for beginners or people who are interested in seeing the process then you may find this worth watching so what I'm doing here is I am laying I'm putting the layout out so that I can get a feel for where everything's going to sit. Um, I generally do do this where I will lay the base of the layout out and then I will stick down that base and I will build up on that. So I have used some of the large ephemera pieces rather than pattern paper to put behind the photo. So by putting layers behind the photo and then building embellishments in clusters around the photo, you keep the focus on the photo. So when it comes to composition, you don't want your embellishments to take away from the photo. You want the embellishments to enhance the photo and to draw attention to the photo. So the other good thing about laying down these base layers first, when you're using rub-ons, it enables you to work out exactly where you want the rub-ons to go because obviously you don't want to put down rub-ons and then find out you're going to cover most of them up. So by getting that positioning and with, I find with these particular pattern papers in 49 and Market, so it has the flowers on each side and then it tends to have well this particular one has like a, a printed design in the middle that makes it sort of look like soft background layers and I find that it's a very logical decision for me to then build my photo and um, embellishment cluster in that center panel so I naturally do that and this is a default style um, for me, the photo is a four by six with four photos printed on it, but you could have one four by six photo. You could also do two four by threes, or you could uh, even use two four by sixes and just change this, widen the composition a bit. Um, so, by, but by doing this, you get to see those flowers still on the side and they become part of the composition of the page. And you can see here that I'm laying some rub-ons on. 
exactly where I want them with the photos being placed how I've got them there. And that means that I can now lift up the photo a bit and put the rub on on before I stick all those other elements down and they're going to be in the right position. Um, what else can I tell you about composition? So um, this style of layout, as I've said, is very much a default for me. If you go back and look at my 49er market layouts, a lot of my 49er market layouts are in this composition. As I said, I find that the pattern papers in particular work really well with this composition. Now I've gone off to do something. I actually think I was looking for something. I think I was hunting around off my table looking for something. Normally I would edit this out, but I have left it in so that you can see that, you know, I do faff as I'm making a layout. Like everything doesn't happen exactly perfectly um, when you are when I'm scrapbooking. So you see the video with all the bits cut out, but this is, this is the whole process. I actually went away to have a look about some using some letters, but then I decided, no, I was going to just use countryside. Um, this layout will actually go down to embellish it and it will be in the shop. If, if you are a local to Timaru in New Zealand and you want to actually see this layout in real life, because, uh, layouts look really different in real life to what they look, um, even through the video camera or um, particularly with still photos. So I am contemplating um, what I want to use for the title here. So that I did go and look at some potentially using some chipboard letters, but I decided that I should try and use a rub-on. Uh, what I was concerned about is that I would lose the rub-on because it's the yellow and the black if I put it onto dark part of the photo, I was worried I would lose the black. And I, if it was on a light part of the photo, I was worried that I would use lose the yellow. So I'm going to show you what I ended up doing to make that work because I did end up going with a rub on. I had a look at the laser cuts too to see if there were any words that could be used for titles there. I also pulled out the pack of chipboard and had a look at through that. But I just, I couldn't find anything else and I really liked the be happy because Robin was very happy when she successfully caught the swarm. Um, and so I was having a look through, but anyway, I ended up deciding that I would pull some of these laser cut flowers. I love the big sunny sunflowers that were in this and they work really well with um, the other yellow elements that I've picked out and it works well with yellow flowers that are already on the background. So you can see that I'm I'm going to build these sunflowers up in the same in similar spot to where the existing flowers are printed in the background paper. So it 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 adds to those existing patterns that are there and builds a layer up with the photo. So sort of joining those printed flowers in with the um, flowers that are in the background paper. Now I've put that that second sunflower down a bit, but finally when this layout's stuck down, I will move it up so it's more um, in, with that um, yellow flower that's printed on the left-hand side of the page. And there's also some super cute little laser cut bees and I'm going to incorporate some of those in um, around the photo cluster as well. And of obviously being um, a layout about bees, uh, that was particularly perfect. Um, so we've been in this house uh, a bit over four years and we've always had bees. Um, so when we bought the house, there were bees in the garden, a beehive in the garden. So um, it's something that we've always had here. I have a very large, quite lush garden with lots of flowers. And so having the bees here um, is very beneficial and um, they seem quite happy. So that's good. Um, although they do swarm every year, the hive swarms. So we're trying to deal with that. And Robin's trying to tackle that as our new um, beekeeper. Uh, so now I'm just going to rub these rub-ons on the 49. As I always say, the 49 and market rub-ons are amazing. They go on so well. So this is like a little, um, distressed beehive pattern, um, an old fashioned beehive. So I'm putting this down, um, at the bottom 
So what's going to happen is I'm going to end up with clusters of embellishments on both sides of the photo. So very much um, enhancing and drawing attention to that photo. So just trying to get that um, rub on applied. Um, the good thing is as you start to peel it up, if something hasn't come off, you can just rub it a bit more and it will come off. And I will show you in this um, layout that I will put rub-ons over rub-ons. Again, because the 49er market rub-ons are so good, um, the new rub, like you can add rub-ons over the top of rub-ons with no problems. You won't lift the first rub-on off at all. Now, um, because I know where I want the papers to go, I'm just sticking a bit of wet adhesive under those and putting them into place. Um, the wet glue that I use, um, you probably, if you follow my channel, you know this, um, but if you're new, it's art glitter glue. Um, I like it. It dries clear and it's not too shiny and it's not sticky and um, it's my glue of choice. I've been scrapbooking since my son was born or since before my son was born and he's nearly 18. So I've been scrapbooking about 18 years and I must say that the one adhesive that will stick where it should stick is a wet glue. Um, and this art glitter glue is excellent. Um, I found that some of my double-sided tape layouts are falling apart now when I go back to look at them. And so I definitely do prefer um, a wet glue. So I'm just cutting this um, rub-on off because I don't want to put rub-on behind um, the uh, photo background because there's no point in that so I've just cut a bit off it and I will apply that separately um, just so this is a tool that comes in the the tool I'm using here they come with every set of pack of rub-ons that 49 and market have that comes with this little plastic tool which also makes um, a good easy bone folder as well um, if you if you need something for um, folding an edge um, I have acrylic nails and I find my nails work really well to apply these rub-ons too because they really are um, very easy to apply. So that rub-ons down, that's like um, a distressed sort of chicken wire design and I, I thought it, even though it was chicken wire, it sort of looked a bit like honeycomb. So I thought that worked really well. And this is the second bit of that rub on. So the small bit that I cut off and I'm just going to curl it down around the side. So it basically looks like it's building off that first larger rub on that I applied. And so it wraps around the uh, pieces that are sitting behind the photo, which I have already stuck down. So they are definitely in the right place. And I've also stuck a couple of tags in there as well, and they are glued down already as well. Now, this little, um, it's like a um, negative holder. I cut it in half because I could have used yellow on one side and green on the other, but I decided that with the amount of yellow that was already happening behind the photo, I needed to contrast that. So I decided to bring in some more of the green. And so I cut the green one in half so that I could use half on one side and half on the other. You should always feel free to make your embellishments your own and change them up as you need them. So I'm just sticking this sunflower down and I am going to put a little bit of double tape behind the head so that it sits up higher. So I'm just grabbing my double-sided tape. Um, you don't need a lot of depth to add shadow and dimension to a layout. Um, definitely much easier to store layouts that aren't two dimensional when it comes to putting them into albums or having to store them after you've made them. So I, I, a lot of the time I don't add huge amounts of dimension to my layout, but just a layer of, um, foam tape or chipboard offcut or, um, craft foam, kids craft foam, which is what I usually use but I'm out of that at the moment, so I need to go and get some more. Um, so I'm just using some double-sided tape that I had handy, or double-sided foam tape that I had handy. Um, and I'm also putting a layer of dimension behind the photo so that it stands up a little bit from the background. As I said, just a small amount of shadow that dimensional items add can make a big difference to how your layout looks in the end. Okay, so I'm sticking down this photo. As I said, it's going on the 
um, background pieces which were from the ephemera pack and the tags are also from that ephemera pack. I am just making sure that the photo is on straight. Um, I am using a T-square ruler there. Um, I cannot tell you how much I love my T-square ruler. It's a 12-inch or 13-inch T-square ruler. Best thing ever for making sure things are square and um, for easy measurements when you're working in scrapbooking, because obviously scrapbooking being a 12-inch page, um, for most layouts, um, it is fantastic. So if you are looking for a new ruler or you want to know what I use, I use a 13-inch T-square ruler fantastic fantastic part of an essential kit now i'm just sticking down this b ephemera piece and again i am using the foam tape um, i am sticking the foam tape on one side so that the b sits a little bit i'm doubling it up and i'm putting it on one side so that the b sits a little bit higher than the photo um, and i am also now going to stick down the other sunflower um, and I'm using a little bit of foam tape behind the head of that. So again, so it sits up. Sorry that this is off the screen, but um, it's hard to do everything that far forward when you're sticking tape and what have you done. So now you can see what I was talking about before, that the sunflower that I've stuck down on the left is close to that cluster of flowers printed on the paper, and the sunflower on the right is close to the other cluster of flowers that is printed on the paper. And so it creates that band of yellow going across the layout, which draws your eye to the photo. You know, it brings your eye in. Now I'm adding this little phrase. As I said, feel free to make embellishments your own. This phrase was too long for what I wanted for this layout. So I cut it into three pieces and it works perfectly. And the yellow balances out the yellow from the tag on the other side. So, you know, I've got that yellow strip across the top with the ephemera piece and then the yellow phrase and the yellow tag create another strip at the bottom of the photos and they balance each other out. And then I'm sticking a little laser cut B down in that bottom corner, which sort of balances out with the hive that's on the, on the uh, left-hand side. And I am also going to stick down a little B at another little laser cut B in the top. Um, so then I've got the B at the bottom, the B on the ephemera piece and a laser cut B at the top. So I'm just putting some foam tape again behind those so that they sit up off the page. Um, the laser cuts that 49 and Market produce are amazing. They are so fine and detailed and I absolutely love using them. Being on sheets, they um, make it really easy for you to see what you've got and to pop them out. I, I fussy cut because I like the effect but I hate doing it. So being able to just pop out laser cuts is just amazing. Um, I'm just fiddling here with trying to decide whether I'm going to put this label uh, from the ephemera pack on the page. And it would have worked quite well up in that, that corner. That would have extended that line created by the rub-ons, that diagonal flow across the page created by those rub-ons. And I leave that there, but it's not, it's not, yeah, it's not exactly what I want. So I won't end up putting that up there and you'll see me move it again. I'm sitting there contemplating, is this where I want it or do I want to move it? And as I said, I think you, you could certainly have it up there and it could work, but it's not probably what I want to do. But I am thinking about that and I pull out some more rub-ons and I've decided I'm going to add some more rub-on sunflowers, which there's a whole sheet in the 6x8 rub-on packs. I am going to pull some of these um, sunflowers from the rub-ons and add them to my sunflower laser cuts. And so it makes them, because they're softer being the rub-ons, it looks like they're sitting back behind the laser cut sunflowers, which are much better bolder uh, and I'm being smart and I'm trimming off the bottom self hitch off my uh, 12 by 12 page because again if you follow this channel you know that this is a bad habit of mine to start a layout without trimming off that strip and sometimes I get myself into trouble because I put too much dimension on the page and I can't trim the strip off um, but I've got that off now and I'm just 
looking again at my title and tossing up what I'm going to do. Because there's a couple of different phrases on there that would have worked that use the B, um, B double E pun to create the phrases. Um, and I think I may end up putting those down. Here we go. I'm still tossing up about the title and I'm coming and having a look at the chipboard to see whether there's any words on there that I could use for my title. But I think they're too small um, and I don't have the any larger chipboard words in this collection. So um, I'm not going to use the chipboard. I will come back to the rub on. I'm not sure if that's now or whether I do my sunflowers. So I am getting quite close to the end of this layout, even though I'm only 20 minutes into making it. The rest of what I'm adding is just extra frou-frou to it. So this layout, if you did this, would be perfect the way it is. A little bit of journaling um, and, and it's done. Um, but you can add more to it, which is what I'm working on now, um, to give it more detail, give it more interest, add extra detail to the layout. But the this layout, as it is now, would be absolutely fine. So if you're wondering how to add extra to your layouts because you want to add more detail, looking at this process can help you with that. Um, you can see that really you could have left off the rub outs in the bottom left and top right corners as well. And this layout would have worked just fine. So the base of the layout, the foundation of the layout works really well. And the embellishments just add that little extra something, something to it. Um, and I suppose a lot of people ask me about how I do that. And so this process hopefully will help you understand that, that it is a lot of contemplation and deciding what elements are going to keep the balance of the layout, the balance of the composition whilst adding to it. So you can see that I ended up deciding on be happy and I'm just placing that and trying to get the dark B on a lighter part of the photo and the light coloured happy on a dark part of the photo so that the title shows up well enough um, because you don't want those rub-ons to completely disappear into whatever background that you put them on. I mean, the 49 and Marker rub-ons are pretty good at standing up, like they're not too transparent but at standing out, sorry, but they will still disappear into a background if, if there's not enough contrast between the rub-on and the background. So what you can do is what I do next. So I've got I've got the rub on on and you definitely can see it, but it doesn't pop. Okay. Not as much as I would like a title to pop. So what I'm going to do is actually grab a white gel pen and I am going to make sure it's working, which it's not going to work on that paper because that is rub on paper and it's very shiny and smooth. So just finding um, a piece of normal paper and yes, it is working. And so now I'm actually going to put a white shadow around the word happy onto, which is on that black part of the photo. And that will make the title stand out so much more. It will just make it pop out of the page. And so when you see the close up photos at the end of this, you will see the white lines and you will see how it makes the word happy pop from that photo background. So that I've done that before on another 49 and market layout where I used a rub on as the title. And um, this is a really easy technique for just making something that's not. So if it was on a light background, you could use a dark pen to give shadow because this is on a dark background. I'm using the white and it just makes it pop. So just completing that shadow onto that and you can already see on that you can see that happy so much more okay now next step I will probably go back to another lot of rub-ons okay so I've gone to the sunflower rub-ons and as I was explaining to you earlier I'm going to use those to create more depth so that the laser cut sunflowers 
pop out from some sunflowers in the background and again that will just blend in with the yellow flowers that are already part of this printed paper and just add a little more dimension and depth to the layout. Now I like to cut my um, rub-ons out. Some people will just use them on the sheet. That just freaks me out really. It doesn't work for me, particularly on a scrapbooking layout where I generally want my rub-ons to be in very particular spots. If I was doing art journaling and I was a bit more relaxed about it, I might use a whole sheet. Um, and if it was just um, background elements, but when I'm looking for a particular element in a particular spot on a layout, then I will cut them out to make sure that they are in exactly the spot that I want them. So you'll see that by adding those Rob Ellen sunflowers, they are softer, but they work with the sunflower that's there from the laser cuts. And um, I really like that effect. So I'm just trying to find the right sunflowers in the rub-ons that are, have their heads uh, facing the right way um, that I want them and um, are the right sizes. So there's quite a few sunflowers on the sheets to choose from. So I'm just taking my time to make sure I pick out the right ones and that I get the placement right before I rub them on. There we go. Because I know that sometimes you buy these sheets, packs of rub-ons, and some of the sheets can be a bit daunting about how to use them. So when you have these sheets of flowers like this, a great way to do it is to incorporate it in either with dimensional flowers um, or in with um, the laser cut elements so that you have layers and you can create clusters by layering rub-ons um, and other elements. And it's the same with creating a cluster of flowers. You could combine rub-on flowers as the very back element or rub-on leaves, and then you could have acetate leaves or um, laser cut leaves, and then you can have the dimensional flowers of the paper flowers, um, you know, being the 49 and Market, for example, as a brand. There's other ones, obviously, that have the dimensional paper flowers. And combining those elements together can be um, a good way to use those rub-ons, and it makes it your layout, again, more interesting because you have different layers within the cluster, um, which makes the cluster more interesting. So just making sure that rub-on is, is well attached. So it's slightly going over the green um, photo uh, negative frame, like the green check that I cut and put there earlier. And I'm just getting the last of the sunflower flowers now. I mean, I like, when I'm cutting out my rub-ons too, my other tip would be not to remove the backing of the sheet that you're trying to keep because once the backing comes off, it won't stick back onto the rub-ons and then you run the risk that your rub-ons, once they become separated from the backing, it's much easier for them to end up stuck somewhere that they shouldn't be. So I like to, um, one, try and keep my sheet as intact as possible so I can see what I've got left and two, not to peel my backing away from the actual um, background, not to peel the rub-ons off the background until I'm ready to use them because, as I said, once they're detached from the background, you can't get the background to stay properly in place. Um, and I've had rub-ons shift off the backing and stick to the packaging. Um, and once they're stuck on the packaging, that's it. They're, they're, they're done. Um I think now I'm going to get some more rub-ons here. So these are some little bee rub-ons. So there's a whole heap of bees um, on one of the other rub-on sheets. And so I'm cutting some of those out now and I'm going to layer them in around this honeycomb effect um, chicken wire at the top here. Again, um, as I mentioned earlier, rub-ons go over the rub-ons really well. So um, I'm just trying to get the edge of the backing here of, of the rub-on paper to pull it off the rub-ons now I've applied it. Um, so rub-ons go on rub-ons really well. So I'm just putting these little B rub-ons over um, the previous rub-ons that I applied. 
Again, this is a similar idea to what I've done with the sunflowers. I've got the bee laser cuts, which um, stand out really well on the background, and then the rub-on bees give a much softer effect and it looks like bees are in the distance. And now I'm going to rub some more rub-on bees down with the hive that's in that bottom left-hand corner. So I'm just finding some bees. So they're around the sunflower. There's little bees around the sunflowers. And I'm cutting some of those out and I'm just going to stick them um, or rub them on down around where um, the hive is. So these extra elements that I'm adding, they're just just the icing on the cake, I think is the best way to describe it. Not essential, but they make it all look better. Um, if anyone has any questions about this process and the process that I follow, I'm, I do keep an eye on my comments and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, if you are enjoying this video or any of my other videos, I would really appreciate if you do press like. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed, Every time you leave a comment or press the like button, it YouTube uses those analytics uh, to make a decision to promote my content to other scrapbookers out there or other people who are interested in scrapbooking. And I would really appreciate that. I'm very, very close to a thousand subscribers now, and I would love to add some more people to my community. So um, I would appreciate if you would like to leave a comment or press the like button. And as I said, any questions you've got around scrapbooking, I'm happy to help out. If you have any things, techniques that you would like to know more about, please feel free to leave a comment. Um, it's as a result of a comment that I do more discussion about composition and why I do the things that I do and the decisions that I make when, when scrapbooking. So I do take on board your comments and um, I would really appreciate the interaction with you and knowing what, that you, what you get from um, this from these videos. Uh, so I am just looking at adding um, a label. I've decided that I will put a little one at the top of the photo stack there, but the yellow, there's already a lot of yellow going on up there. And so I'm just having a look through the embellishment pack for a green one of these little labels. So yeah, I, I like the idea of that shape, but I um, want the green colour. Usually what I'll put on these labels is the date or the place um, that the photo was taken. So this one would be a date one. So I'm just putting some wet glue and pop that in up there. And there we go. I think that that is the layout complete and I love how this turned out. And that's it. So bye. I have some, I have my little wave bye that I always do at the start and finish. Here's some detail shots of the layout where you'll be able to see the various elements. Um, thank you. And I will have some more videos coming up again soon. I look forward to talking to you again then. Bye.